everybody. I hope you're enjoying this wonderful icy day. Let's see, we're gonna get sit on here. And then our special guest. Hold on a second there, guys. <laughs> we're gonna get sit on with us. And then our special guest for today. It's gonna be a good time. There are no uh, classes today. Uh, if you are coming to the center, the small group classes and the youth classes are in fact canceled today. Thank you very much for asking that. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the show. Sid the Jewel Vanderpool. And, oh, it's not accepting. Hold on, guys, I'm trying to get you in. There we go. There we go. We got Josh, the boss. What's Hello. up? Hello. How are you? How are you? Good. Good to see you. How's things? It, it, uh, it's okay. They're okay. It's a little icy here. Kids yeah, are at home. I, I was gonna try and go down to uh, the gym today, but I don't think uh, I don't think I'm gonna be leaving the house. It's like freezing rain where I, I'm up in Orangeville. So yeah. Last night it was crazy windy. Like you could hear it. It was nuts. And then I woke up and the the roads are pretty bad. So. Uh, yeah. We've got the same thing here. I just took my daughter to the neighbors for a play date. Oh, yeah. And we had a nice little fun slip and slide down the street. I was like, well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> nice. But we nice. have my son as an additional special guest, if required. He <laughs> has focus pads and is prepared to hold them for me. Oh, awesome. Well, yeah. this could be really, really interesting. Right? Definitely. Hey, Josh, how are you doing, man? How are you, Sid? Good to see you, man. Good, man. Good to see you as well. Awesome. Okay. So I went vintage All right. for you here, Josh. Throwback Thursday. I went with the mm -hmm. United Promotions tracksuit. That's the old school tracksuit. That's awesome. I know. I've had it for, I think, eight years now. I want to request one of those. That's, that's pretty sweet. It's yeah. hard. I'm not going to lie to you. I talked to Tyler. I was like, <laughs> can I get like a new one for that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's nice. It's really. I got a couple golf shirts. I got I to gotta, uh, bother them for a tracksuit. Oh, I gotta bother them for a golf shirt now. Yeah. Cool. I like it. Your crispy right. coffee looks good. Yeah. Um, Josh, let's talk about what you like. I mean, it's the end of the year. Let's talk about what you have coming up because I'm excited. I mean, love watching your fights uh, live and just yeah, just interested to know what 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 do you have on the on the burner coming up. Uh, so 2022 is a big year. We had seven fights. Uh, I won my first title. Uh, we finished the year with a third round knockout against a guy from Germany. So next year, my next fight is lined up. Um, I just got the contract sent um, February 25th, CAA Center. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm a hundred. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty positive it's going to be a title defense. So the IBA, it'll be uh, 147, so welterweight. Um, IBA Intercontinental Belt. I'll be defending the belt. Uh, February 25th, CA Center. We're fighting um, Julio Ver Ver Verinozo. I might be saying that last name wrong, but Julio Verinozo. Um, I think he's an Albanian guy. He fights out of Italy. Uh, um, I've seen a couple couple tapes on him, but yeah, 2023 is going to be a big year. I think we're going to start off the year with that fight, and then uh, hopefully some bigger titles down down the line and some some bigger fights. So. 2023, I think right now I'm ranked um, top 50. You know, the goal is obviously I want to be a world champion, but yep. uh, there's steps you got to take to get there. So, yeah, 2023 is going to be a big year. I just want the biggest fights possible. I just, I just, that's all I want. So, I just want to make it to the top. That's my goal. Nice, nice, nice. And so, February 25th, uh, what does your train, so you'll take some time off over the holidays or like when we, when we are camp start? Has camp already started for you? Uh, no. So Stevie um, has been giving me a little bit of a break. Like I said, 2022 is a big year. We had seven yeah. fights, which is huge. Um, so it was like a week off, back into camp. Week off, back into camp, which which I, it is what it is. Boxing is not like other sports where there's no on and off season. It's kind of you, you make it while the sun shines. So uh, right now, I guess you could say I'm a little bit on an off season. Um I just bought property out uh, in Nova Scotia. So me and my, my girlfriend, we were out there for about three and a half weeks. 
we got back last week. I'm, I'm, I was still running and, and going to the gym, but like the intensity is very, very low. I'm just kind of maintaining kind of thing. Um, but yeah, camp will probably start six to eight weeks. Um, so I'm going to enjoy the Christmas holiday, enjoy, enjoy some food and, and family and, and stuff like that. So camp will, will, will start off the first week of January. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I know most fighters, um, they always want to be training in camp, um, always like boxing, boxing, boxing. How important is it to you to take that time? I mean, even if it's a week, how important is it to take that time off? Or are you one of those guys, like, okay, no, like, if I feel like I'm not getting forward, I'm not advancing if I'm not in the gym. Or have you got to the point where you're like, you know what, there's a time to be fighting and there's a time to be kind of doing yeah, other things. so I'm – I'm very, I'm very hard on myself and I'm very critical of myself. So I always feel like there is more to be done. Um, I feel like to be great, you have to have that, that, that mindset, but mm -hmm. I need, I need the break. The break's nice. Uh, I go hard when it's time to go hard. And then when it's yeah. time to, to rest, uh, I like to enjoy my time, my time off. So, uh, but when it's time to go to work, I'm, I'm the hardest worker in the room, hands down. But yeah, when it's, Time to enjoy my rest. I like to uh, definitely enjoy some time off for sure. Uh, it's like to say, work hard, play hard, right? That's it, buddy. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Sonia, yeah, I'm seeing some stuff scrolling up and down. I don't know if there's any questions or anything you want to, any comments? I haven't seen any questions yet. I've had a let's go. Okay, I've seen people just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen people say, let's go. All right, get it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> Lots of love, though. Lots of love hearts. I've got to state that right now. Nice, nice. So, again, as we go through this, one of the things that we want to make sure we're doing is, because last time we didn't get enough training in for Sonia, because uh, in the 50th show, she's going to have a fight here. And so we want to make sure that she is getting prepared, because this is pretty much her train, her boxing training. So yep. we want to make sure she gets uh, a few things in here, to tips to take away. What is your favorite punch to throw? So I... I... I, I believe I was telling Sonia this uh, a, a few weeks back because I, I was excited to be on the show. So I, I told her I'll save it for the show. So I didn't give her the full, all the goods. Um, but my favorite punch to throw would have to be, uh, it's called an up jab. So, I mean, I, I'll try to set up my phone. I'll try and see if I can. Oh, I'm just man. I don't, eat, I, I don't hear that one very often from people. The up jab. Um, yeah. So, I love watching Marvin Hagler yeah. see through nice up jab. Marvin Hagler, uh, my favorite fighter, uh, Aaron Pryor. He oh. is a master. He's a master class at it. So there's many ways of, of throwing it. There's many ways of setting it up. Um, so like I said, there's there's very there's a lot of diff different variations of what I'm about to show you. Yeah. But the up jab essentially. So there's the jab, which is just coming straight out with the left here. We all know what the jab is. Most important punch in boxing, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the up jab is more of a so you have the jab, and then you have an uppercut, which is like this, coming from, from the up behind. The up jab is a mix of those two punches. So, I mean, the best way I like to set it up is you can set it up with the right hand, and then you kind of come up like this. Oh, like and, that. and for me, it's when a guy has tight defense, um, you can break through – guy or girl, sorry. Um, you can break through that defensive shell with that punch. So okay. – for me, the up jab is money. I yeah. love the up jab. Okay. Yeah. Now I noticed okay, when okay. you did it, you went came up this way with the uppercut instead of like this. So I assume there's a reason uh, for that as well. So you're, when you're landing the punch, it will be landing kind of like an uppercut. Like your your fist will be coming up like an uppercut. Okay. But it's not coming right up from the bottom. It's more. It'd be easier to show you if I was in person, but. So you, well, there you go, Sanchez. So, just, so, just wants to come down to the center and hang so, out with us. In your boxing stance, correct? Yep. Yeah. Dip to the left. Dip into that left, that left leg here. And that's where the power is going to generate from. And generating coming up like this. Yeah. So the uppercut okay. is more like this, right? Uppercut's coming here. Jab's yep. coming here. The up jab's like right in the middle. All right. So like a. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, of course, um, it's another variation of a jab, but just I love jabbing to the stomach. It sets up overhand rights. It sets up left hooks to the head. 
Um, the job downstairs is is also one of my my favorite shots just because it brings their hands down it keeps them guessing um it keeps it keeps them on their toes so you want to switch things up you don't want to be doing the same thing over and over again you want to keep your opponent guessing yeah nice. but up jab up jab to answer your question up jab is my nice favorite job. punch amazing I need that. yeah you you mentioned aaron prior so i mean obviously you you're, you're a student of boxing yeah. you, you what, what was your favorite aaron prior fight yeah. Uh, well, it's a classic, probably against Alexis Argrail. Yeah. Um, just because they were absolute wars, and like his uh, oh. his tenacity and his mindset, like when when he's when he's in the the press conference, when he's walking into the ring, people want to see him. People were like, "Oh, like pe people turn on their heads. Who is this guy? This guy's exciting." You know. So I I kind of envy that, and I, I try to I try to model my my style with that. Uh, another guy I grew up watching was Roy Jones Jr. Yep. Just his slickness and his uh, his footwork. You know, another thing in boxing too uh, is footwork. Like if I so if I had someone come into me and they want to learn boxing and they've never thrown a punch ever, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. my technique. Everyone has different ways of teaching. Um, I would take them to a dance class. And before we throw punches, we're gonna dance. And because I find a lot of people are stiff, and yeah. they uh, like they're very stiff. You know, everything's coming stiff, stiff. I find if you loosen up and you have a little bit of rhythm, and you can kind of like just like I said, you're just dancing. Put on some music and just dance. I find things flow a little easier. And um, for me, I can generate more power, and you're more exciting. You have some rhythm. You're smooth, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there was a pretty decent fighter uh, who's a world champion right now. I think uh, that did some dancing. Was that Lomachenko? Maybe was, did he do? Did Loma oh, do yeah. some dancing? Oh, there's, there's a there's a there's a few different guys that are special with the footwork. Uh, Lomachenko, yeah. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure his father put him into like Ukrainian foot dancing before he started yeah. boxing. So I think these things. They come together, like you know what I mean. Like the footwork is huge in boxing, and obviously dancing is all footwork. So, yeah, I uh, I try to be smooth. Right. Sometimes I'll just put on music. I won't even throw punches. I'll just start dancing. So I have, I have two important. I'm just gonna totally interrupt both of you for a second because right. I have an at Lucas Wan list. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Uh, he would like to know, Josh, when do you plan on fighting next? So we've established that was February at the CAA 20, Center. Yes. Fifth, I believe. Yep. Yeah. And then I have an at CR Sports Media would like to know your thoughts on Riziki's last performance out east. That's Chris. Hey, Chris. How's it going, buddy? Um, the last performance uh, of Riziki was a complete uh, annihilation. I was there live. Um, Riziki's a teammate of mine now. We have the same coach, Stephen Bailey. Uh, kind of grew up a bit of a, a relationship there. So he's a good friend of mine. Uh, his last performance was was uh, the guy was a last minute last minute replacement. So you know, kudos to him for taking the fight. Basically, moved up to heavyweight. He's a he's a cruiserweight naturally. So he he moved up, I think, ten or fifteen pounds, which which that takes a set of kahunas to do. Um, yeah. The guy was twenty two and eight. He had eighteen knockouts. The guy was no slum. The guy the guy was a real deal fighter. He, you know, he wasn't just some can coming to lose. Um, yeah, he came out of the gate. He landed a big shot first, and that's pretty much what set the tone early. Um, I think his last fight before that, he got he fought an Olympic style boxer who had very high skill boxing. So his his like brute strength, um, and, and she can destroy kind of. Did out for him. Uh, he, he got off the game plan. I feel like he had a better game plan coming into this fight, and that's what kind of uh, got him the early knockout. So he, he, for him, he needs to stay out of his head and just stick to the game plan, and he's he's a killer. So he's going to be doing some big things on the world stage soon, I think. I agree. I mean, he's, he's already been on the world stage. Um, yeah, he's already fought for uh, World title, Oscar Rivas. Uh, he has nothing else to yeah. prove. You know, I, I see a lot of people being like, "Oh, when's he gonna fight a real fight?" He's only if go look at the guy's box track. He's only fought guys with winning records. He he never backs down from a challenge. Uh, he's a true blood and guts warrior. So uh, 
much respect to Ryan Rizicki. No, no doubt about that. No one can say that the guy's not a blood and guts warrior. I mean, like, the, the guy likes to fight. He likes to mix it up. He's in there because he wants to do damage. And yeah. He doesn't mind receiving some damage. Like, yeah, he's he's like a true, like, gladiator from back in the yeah. day, man. Yeah, and not to yeah. mention, he's so humble about, like, his life and his boxing career. He's such a kind person outside of the ring. I personally would not want to step in the ring with him because uh, it's he, it's a total 180. There's Ryan Rizicki and then there's Ryan Rizicki in the ring and they're two completely different people yeah. all together. It, it is that, yeah. that staple, you know, everyone used to say Mike Tyson was a nice guy, but then if you were going to step in the ring with him, luck yeah. out, that is not the same person. I, I think and, it's, there's Ryan Rizicki. And then there's the bruiser. Yeah, you don't want to get yeah. in the ring with the yeah, bruiser. Yeah, yeah. I'll talk about yeah. with the bruiser. Forget about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, I agree. and sometimes in the gym, sometimes in the gym, like watching that man train, like some people have that natural. I've seen a few. I've seen it over the years in boxing where, um, I mean, his skills are are coming together. He's got skills. I'm not saying that he does not have boxing skills, but his strength and power alone is insane. Watching him hit the bag is like I have power, I have speed, like I, you know. So it's I can admire these things, and it's when I see him hit the bag, you're just like, I would not want to be getting hit with those. Yeah, 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 yeah. So speaking of uh, power, uh, skill, footwork, endurance, all those sorts of things, what is what do you feel your greatest attribute in the ring is? What what is your greatest attribute? Uh, I to be honest, I think it's my mindset. Um, I have, you know, very high confidence when I step into the ring and I feel like the mindset and boxing skills and training hard are a very big part of boxing. Um, so I believe it's actually my mindset that's getting me the furthest. I have a lot of boxing skills. I have 70 amateur fights. Um, you know, I fought on team Canada as an amateur. So I've been in, I've been in international experience, which obviously helps big time. Um, <clears throat> I think my boxing skills are superb, uh, but yeah. yeah, it's my mindset. I just, I, I believe in myself <clears throat> all the time. I never, I don't know. I never think of losing. I never, that's never an option. Um, I train hard. So I, I, you know, I'm confident in my training. So when I'm in the ring, I just, I know I did everything I possibly could have. Best man's going to win tonight. Um, but to beat me, you're going to have to go through hell. Yeah. Yeah. And I've, I've heard that I have the uh, at the Oak villain says that the I'm going to bleep it bleeping pressure from Josh's fire. <laughs> the Oak and I saw a couple other comments up there some questions up there too, Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Phoenix would like to know, as she said, aren't most boxers two different people in and out of the ring? Uh, I'd like to say most, but I've, I've personally met a few who are the same. Yeah. I, I, I think generally uh, when you're stepping into the ring, you know, there's people watching you. There's adrenaline. Um, it's intense. Someone's trying to hurt you in front of your family and your friends. So it's very, it's in a very intense situation. Um, so obviously you're going to change a little bit. You, you, you know, someone like you're, you're in a fight. So like your adrenaline's through the roof. You're, uh, you're more alert. Someone's trying to punch you in the face and knock you out. Um, so you're going to change, you're, you're going to, your persona is going to change a little bit. Um, but I find too, it can help you. Like I'm a very confident guy in life. And when you watch my fights, I find, um, people want to see me, you know, I come out, I have the hair, I have all my colors matching. I, I, I look the part, you know, I'm some guys get in there and they, they look a little gun shy in the crowd. And I, but this also comes with experience, right? Um, I've been doing this a long time. And I, I still get nervous. I'm still a human being, but I've learned how to channel that nervousness into I have a job to get done and I want to win. So I'm not going to let that other stuff interfere with my performance. It's go time. It's show time. So. That reminds me, Josh, um, speaking of that, because you do come out and you have like the lime green hair and the lime green shorts and everything matches and it looks so put together. Please don't let me forget after this. Please remind me to message you because um, my son needs some new lime green being his favorite color boxing gear. And I would be remiss if I did not get a hold of that, especially with him sitting there. Perfect. He'd be like, Mom, you didn't ask. Yes, so remind sure. me, please, to message you and place an order. 
for sure. Hundred percent, we can get that going. Awesome. You, Line you mentioned uh, he's got good taste. He's got good taste. <laughs> I know. I mean, you got to have puppets to come out, you know, with the lime green and, and that whole thing. So, who is your, like, when you think about uh, a fighter that you've watched in the past, um, you know, maybe he's an idol of yours, whatever. When you think about that ring walk, who has that ring walk that you're like, that guy right there? I love that ring walk. I love the way to get in that ring. Who, who's that person? Um, there's a couple different ones. Uh, Right now, a big uh, a big person that I'm following and watching is obviously Tyson Fury. He's yeah. a very entertaining guy. He's very entertaining. He loves to put on a show. Um, Prince Nassim was always – he had some pretty crazy walkouts. I'm not that extreme because I can't do backflips and stuff off the ropes. Yeah. But, um, yeah. But there's, if, there's, there's, I'd be like, get off the ropes. Could, you if you could, would but you do it? I, I think – I, I think I would. Yeah, I think I would. Yeah. Yes. But, but but there's also, I watch Mike Tyson and guys like him walk in where it's just straight face, seek and destroy. And I kind of, sometimes I'm like, well, I want to try that too. So like, I don't know. I, I, it's just a matter of finding what you like and what makes you feel comfortable. Yeah. Not so true. I was watched uh, Chris Eubank and the way he used to roll, like Chris Eubank was just like, like Wait, a mad senior? Chris, yeah, Chris senior. Eubanks Sr. Senior. Yeah. Senior. And, like, when he got in there, it was just, like, he was oh, just staring. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was good. That guy's funny, man. Nice. 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 Uh, Sonia, I saw a couple more questions come up in there. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. yes. Hello, hello, I say that, hello to my uh, daughter. My daughter has never, ever, ever tuned in. Look at that. She tuned in for wait. this one. Hi, Lexi. Wait, Le Hi, Lexi. Lexi. Lexi, how are you? Yeah. <laughs> There you go. There we go. No, Josh is bringing all the things. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix That's awesome. is just saying she prefers to go with for colors red, yellow, and orange to match the colors of fire. Oh, <laughs> nice. That's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's that very nice. Why did you choose the lime green? Like, what's what's with the, the lime green? Why, why why is that for you? To be honest, I was uh, I was making my, my trunks for my comeback fight. Um, I fought, I, I had a five year layoff and I was fighting a guy from Quebec. He was undefeated. So I was six and oh, and I took a little bit of a break and then I came back and after a five year layoff and fought a guy eight and oh in his hometown. And I remember thinking like we had this conversation before where it was like, I'm going into this guy's hometown. If I show up in just like normal boxing trunks and they're going to look like I'm here to lose. So I want to come in like I'm looking here, like I'm looking to win. So when I was on the site making my trunks, it just there's lime green is like I like like now lime green is my favorite color because now I've made it a thing. But yeah. it was never really. It just happened. It just I was making my trunks. I'm like, ooh, that looks nice. And then it just kind of it just stuck. It just it just so, stuck. I'm gonna let you know because lime green. If you if it's like now one of your favorite colors, um, because you know I'm a mom. So so I do like the mom stuff. Yeah. Um, and researched. When my son was little, uh, when Travis was little, I researched because he was obsessed. He's been obsessed with lime green since he was like two. Everything has been lime green. Yeah. And I looked it up. I'm like, what does it mean if your kid like is obsessed with only one specific color? And they have meanings. You know, colors have meanings. Um, and apparently green and specifically lime green and having that as your favorite color is a sign of intelligence Ooh. and creativity. I, I believe it. There we oh. go. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, all oh, right, let's rock with it. My, I I'm going to have to take that. That's my new reasoning now why that's my color. I'm intelligent <laughs> and creative. You're welcome. Yeah. You're faster yeah. rocks, man. And you're, you're intelligent and creative. Rock it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Nice. So, uh, just my boy Mo. My boy Mo there. Hey, Mo. What's up, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see that, right? He's like, yeah. gosh. Cool. Mo's got a fight coming up too. He's fighting this weekend. Let's go, Mo. Get yeah, that knockout, buddy. Man, that kid is yeah. skilled. Mo, yeah. what's up? Yeah, yeah. Mo is skilled, yeah. man. Mo is yeah. skilled. He's a very good friend of mine, so he's got a big fight coming up. Hopefully, he gets that that KO. Yeah. Get that W, man. Get that W. Nice. That's it. Well, I got Mo. When are you coming on the show, man? We'll get Mo on here. There we right? go. Well, yeah. Mo. Mo was on next. <laughs> yeah. Good. So. Um, we Gosh. actually have a very special guest, but Mo, if you want to be our first fight of or our oh. first fighter of twenty twenty three, you just let us know, man. 
There you go. Uh, I just wanted to hear from Josh a little bit more about that because I didn't know that you you took the five years off and then your first fight back was against the guy eight and O in his hometown. So, what was going through your head? Who who does that? Like, yeah. wait a second. Yeah, so, I, I, well, and you can respect this because you know the game. Um, so I remember coming back and it was. You know, I kept telling people, okay, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. And, and people are okay. Because I was, I was not living the uh, – I did some, some things where I was coming back and saying I was going to come back, and I didn't. I was just – I was unsure of myself and what I wanted to do with my life, and I didn't know what I was doing, where, what direction I was going in. Um, but boxing's always been a part of my life, and, I, and it just has a big hold on me. I'm like, I feel like I have more to do in this sport. Um, so coming back, you know, not many people were like, oh, what's he going to do? I had a contract with a promotional company at West that was, there was a lot of stuff going on with that where I was trying to get out of that contract. Um, so we got offered this fight. They thought, okay, we're at, I was 6-0, and he was 8-0. and And they're thinking, this guy hasn't fought in five years. They've obviously maybe heard some stories to the grapevine, his head, whatever, right? Um but yeah, me and my brother, we uh, we just said if we're gonna do this, let's do this. Like let's let's jump right into the fire and show everyone that we're not we're not messing around. And uh, we did exactly that. It was a six round shutout in his hometown, which is pretty crazy because like you know wow. if you're fighting a guy's hometown, getting a decision there it means you like we won every round easy. Like I'm and I don't mean that out of disrespect. The guy was. Wow, a very good opponent. But and then the next fight, because we still didn't. People were like, oh, maybe, maybe that guy had a bad night, or maybe, maybe this, that, maybe you know what I mean. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So what we did next is we fought another undefeated guy in the states in his hometown and did the exact same thing two in a row. So now, now people were like, oh, oh, this is this, this is. This is the boss. This is who the boss is. And then you know, United picked me up, and now we've just been on a, we've been on a run. Those are those are pivotal moments in 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 a fighter's in in a career in a life when people don't believe you have the ability to do something, and you in yourself say, "Yeah, I do," and you go and you prove it, and you do it two times. I mean. That is that's that's the fundamental stuff that's going to carry you, you know, to that world place where you want to get to in the world. I mean, that's that's massive, man. So yeah, and like, on that. like, I, like I said earlier on the show, uh, you know, I've always, I've always believed in myself. You know, when I look in the mirror, it's there's no doubt. Um, I, I I believe in my capabilities. I believe that I I can work harder than everyone. I believe my boxing skills are are uh, world class, and I just I take that belief. To the grave. Nice, yeah. nice. Work hard, believe, man, achieve. Yeah. So, and it, it is nice when it comes yeah. and, and people finally realize. Like it, it was a good, very good feeling when, when I got those two wins. And like you said, it's very. Even looking back now, that was, I've had six fights since then. Um, yeah. Those two fights were probably one of my my favorite fights. My actually, my title fight was my favorite fight because yeah. I was I was down in that fight. I was down, and I kind of had to, I had to 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 adjust and adapt, and then I got the knockout in the ninth round. So I mean, that was probably my favorite fight in my whole career. But those two fights were like, um, you know, when you're walking in, and you're getting booed, and you're, and, you're, and you know, every punch he lands, a jab is like, oh, you land a big overhand right. There's there's nothing. So like, facing that, facing that, it it kind of adds uh, it adds some things to your your toolbox. Sure, and I was there when you knocked that kid out uh, for the title in the ninth round. Um, he was a boxing machine. I was worried for you, man. I was worried. I was like, I don't know. And you yeah, pulled it I, out. Like I mean, said, I've watched it. I've watched it back a bunch, and yeah. you know, hometown guy, maybe, maybe, maybe four four, maybe. But I was, I was not being biased, and I was watching it like actual boxing mm -hmm. i think i was down two rounds i think i was down five to three going into the ninth round and i remember my coach just saying like you waited too long like you need to go now or else you're gonna lose the fight and uh and what happened was actually the whole the whole fight the guy was standing up in the corner so 
I kept looking over and I knew, I knew, I don't let it get in my head. I'm like, okay, he's standing up. He's trying to show he's not tired and all this, right? Yeah. When he, when he messed up is when he sat down. I look over in the ninth round and he's sitting down and I'm like, you messed up. You messed up. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah. So I came out obviously, and so I came out and I obviously had a little bit extra juice because I seen that he was, there yeah. was a, a chink in his armor. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and and then I heard him, and, and then it was game over. Yeah, the mindset, like you said, right? You're able to see it. You're able to see, you know, well, what's going on inside his head. And, and, and people don't realize, like when I'm when you're in the ring, it's a very, like I said before, it's an intense situation. I remember having these actual conversations in my head while I'm standing across from this man. I'm going, all right, Josh, you can either box like you've been boxing all night, and it's going to be a close decision, and you're probably going to lose. Or we can bite down on the mouth guard and we can step to this guy and, and do what we got to do. And then I, and as soon as I did that, Stevie was telling me the whole fight to do that. I just, I was hesitating. I wasn't doing it. And as soon as I listened and I just, I stepped to him and let the right hand go and it landed. It was, I heard him and, and then I jumped on him. It was, it was perfect. Sonia, you don't know this yet, but you will get this when you have your fight. When things get tough, you are literally looking into another person's soul. You can see what is on the inside of a person when you get in those moments, man. It's it's okay. it's crazy. So it's surreal. It is very right. wild. And, and, and as fighters, you 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 have to to be there and like go through it to know what he's saying. But yeah. you know, he knows. They know. Like it's you can't explain it. Like you, you just know. Like you know who's winning. You know who where yeah. they're at in their head. You know everything. Like it's wild. Right. What, yeah. Well, what I really want to know here is, do I, like, are we going to have, I, obviously I'm going to need, like, sparring sessions before you just throw me in and I'm just fighting. Cause I really don't want to go in blind. I mean, I'm literally going to be partially blind anyways, so. As long, as, only ever as, long as, your, as long as your technique is sound and yeah. you have a game plan and you're in good shape, you'll have nothing to worry about. Okay, and I hear it is extremely crucial, like you just said, to listen to your coach. Absolutely, listen very much so. Your corner. If they're telling you to do something, there's probably good reason for it. I have heard that time and time again. You have to have trust in your corner, and also, I'm sure you'll find out after you go through this and you watch your fight on video, whether people video it or not. There's going to be points in the in the fight where you're like, "Why didn't I? Like, why didn't I do that?" And and you see it. And you got to realize that that's what they can see when you're not fighting. Like they can see these things that you're not doing because you're. It's like I said, it's intense a situation. So sometimes you're not doing the things that you should have because you're just not thinking about it. So you have your coach and your team analyzing from the outside to sh tell you these things. So yeah, you gotta you gotta have a good good team and, and believe in your in your system. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, time for the rapid fire. We got two questions, two quick questions to ask before Wait, we wrap up. Well, yeah. on, Travis, would oh. you like to join us for rapid fire? And you can ask Josh a question, any question you would like. Would you like to join us for that? Oh. Yeah. All right. Dude. All Travis right, is going to be going to ask three rapid fire questions. Let's go, today. Travis. Uh, what do you got? This is my son, Travis. Uh, Hi, Travis. Good. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Let's, let's see what you got for me. All right. Um, how how many fights have you done or won? Oh wait, hold on. Many, can we can we expand on that? Sure. Can we ask how many fights he has won his whole fight career, like including yeah, his amateur to now? That's okay, okay. So, as an amateur, I was forty-seven wins, twelve losses. So I had fifty-eight fights, so forty-seven wins, and now I have fourteen professional fights, fourteen wins. So. 47, 50, 61 wins. I have 61 wins. That's a lot of wins. We should have made him do the math, though, because he's not at school today. Oh, oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was that was a good question. I like that rapid that was fire good. question. That's good. That's good. Yeah. That's Thank good. you. Sonia, um, right. you want to go next? My rapid fire question. Favorite sport outside of boxing, non-fight related? Um... Ping pong. Oh, ping yeah. pong. Table tennis. I I love ping pong and I'm I'm pretty good at it too. So yeah, uh, ping pong. 
Who I don't know. I got to – Obviously, I like hockey. Like I like watching hockey. Um, the Canadian answer. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I played the cross. I, I don't know. I, I like I like a lot of sports, but I like ping pong. Okay. All right. Should we yeah. challenge him to ping pong one day? Sure. All right. One day we're gonna challenge you to ping pong. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna pass this a bit. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right, Sid. What's yours? You know what I'm gonna do? Because look at him. He's I'm a big happy. mindset guy myself. It's just got I'm gonna challenge him to one paper, scissors, rock. Paper, right. scissors, rock. There's no best two out of three. It's just yeah. one time. Winner takes oh. all. That's it. Well, this is it. Okay, but all the paper. This is wait, wait, wait. Before we do this, are we doing? Are we going rock, paper, scissors, shoot, or is it just boom, boom, and then go? Rock, boom, paper, boom, scissors, go. Scissors, shoot. Okay, no, boom, no, rock, paper, boom, scissors, boom, scissors, two, shoot, and then go. Boom, yeah, one, two, go. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, Hang on a second here. You said? Did you say rock, paper, scissors, or did you say paper, scissors, rock? Rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. I said rock, paper, scissors. Yeah. Okay, got it. Are you ready? Well, oh, you're trying, you trying to use that. You're trying to use that. All right. Don't worry. Hey. <laughs> forget, forget about it. I got you. I got you, baby. Are you ready? Um, all right. You ready? Let's go. Okay. Ready. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Two. Oh. 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 Okay. Okay. Hey, is it okay. a I can't have a draw. All right, ready. There's no, there's no draw. One, two, three, shoot. Oh, he got it. He got it. One no. That's awesome, man. Told me to pull. He's back, folks. He's back. If you want a rock paper scissors challenge, you know where to go. That's awesome. You guys, you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, man, for your time. Yes. Uh, looking forward to seeing your career continue to grow. I mean, fourteen and zero, uh, defending your title, uh, February twenty fifth uh, at the CAA Center. Uh, I'll be there. I'm coming. United Promotions. I oh. love the fight. So uh, continue oh, success. Have a great training camp, my man. And enjoy. Um, thank you so I've much for. Uh, we have a professional ping pong table available to us. Okay. Through Chain Blast Muscle Systems. Oh, right. So okay. just let us know. Game we'll on. make it happen. Well, I got nice. to gotta make that. I, I just took an L, so I got to come back and. and... <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll, we'll do uh, guys, it. Hey, guys. We'll honestly, it. thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you guys having me on the show. Uh, I look forward to uh, showcasing my skills. 2023 is going to be a big year for the boss. And uh, like I said, thanks for having me on and and, and uh, great questions, great show. I appreciate you guys. Thanks right, for coming. We holiday. appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Later. Later. Have a good Christmas. Thank you. Also, Thank guys, you so much. don't forget to join Sid and I. Our next show, we are going to be live on December 29th again, 11:15 a.m. with the one and only Russ Amber oh, ending the season. Oh, yeah. on the big oh, yeah. show. That'll be fun. I see yeah. Marco there, Marco. Marco, what's up, man? Get back in the ring, Marco. Come on, man. You can and I, your before, skills, bro. Uh, because we are live, I did have a question at the start um, about classes being closed today because we're having a snowy ice day. Uh, some gentlemen wanted to know if uh, the competitive classes this evening will be running. Today is Thursday. Uh, no, there is no competitive classes. Even. Actually, it's because it's going to get worse. Once, once it yeah. cools off even more, the road's going to be terrible. So, no, there's no competitive class this evening. So. All right, there you go, folks. You heard it live from Sid the Man himself. There are no classes today. So Stay no small home. group. Do your push -ups, do your sit-ups, eat your vitamins, all right? Like, you can just stuff at home. Shadow box. Lots we of can study that. After work, work, there's tons of stuff. The up jab. Up, up jab. Up jab. That's it. Up jab. I really need to up jab. I feel like I'm not doing and it right. The body jab. There's... Okay, so on the up jab, so again, yeah. what makes it different than the uppercut is the uppercut, the elbow is going to be bent. Yeah. On the up jab, you extend, you just straighten it out. Yeah, that's what makes gives it the length. So it's a longer punch. All right, yeah. so you throw it, you gotta stand it up. And if you can, if you can protect your uh, chin with the shoulder, even better. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm going to practice that. There you Guys, go. Guys, practice the up jab with me today, okay? Practice the up jab. Tons of things to do. Tons of things. There you go.
Hi, Ann. Bye, Ann. Hi, Bye, Ann. Bye, Ann. See ya. Enjoy your snow day. Have fun, guys. We will see you on the 29th with the one and only Russ Amber.